Well, welcome and um, thank you for joining us today um, for this uh, toileting tips session. So if you do have any questions, please do pop them in the chat. I'm more than happy to answer those. If we do get inundated with questions and we don't get to um, uh, get round to your question, then I'm more than happy for you to message me as well. It's not a problem. So let's um, get started. So as I said, we're going to be looking at toilet tips for supporting children with additional needs here today. So just a little introduction. So I'm Charmaine Champ and I'm a continent sleep and behaviour consultant um, and I work over at Clear Steps Consultancy. So I've been uh, qualified for over 25 years as a community nurse specialist and so I support children and young people with and without a diagnosis. So a lot of the families that I support for a diagnosis or a lot of them have actually received a diagnosis for their children. Um, so I work with children from the age of 18 months through to young adults, which is 25 um, and supporting children, their families, nursery schools and organisations um, across the country and actually beyond. So I have been working with some families in America and Italy um, and Spain as well as Canada as well. Um, so it's just supporting families wherever they may be um, in, in whatever way they actually need that support. So, so here at Clear Steps Consultancy, um, we support children, families, schools and professionals with regards to anything to do with continence. So that's wee, poo, toileting, daytime or nighttime wetting. Um, also with regards to sleep, so anything from settling off to sleep to waking in the night or just establishing a routine. Also around behaviour as well. Um, and that's sort of understanding why um, behaviours may be occurring as, as well as sort of what to do and how to sort of um, progress and move on from that as well. So during this session, we're obviously going to be focusing on toileting today. So we're going to be sharing some tips to help your child start and progress with toileting. So toilet. Where do we actually start? Well, when we're sort of thinking about toileting and our children's sort of toileting journey, we often think it's quite a sort of simple process. We start off in nappies, we progress to using the potty and then we actually start using the toilet. Well, as you may or probably may not realise that there's quite a lot to it in between all of that. And there's quite a lot that can that our children need to be able to interpret, understand um, and even acknowledge within that, uh, within each of those stages before we can actually be successful with our toileting. So some of the characteristics that impact upon toileting uh, can include things like communication and understanding. Sometimes our children aren't able to let us know when they actually need to go to the toilet. And some of our children don't understand those actual we and poo signals that they're receiving. Also, um, our, some of our children are experiencing um, that sort of sensory awareness. So sometimes it's around our children being aware of those internal needs. So when we're thinking about our internal needs, we're thinking about if they're thirsty, they, then they can drink. If they're hungry, they eat. And if they need to go to the toilet, they go to the toilet. But sometimes those internal needs, those sensory needs, um, are not always, always able to be recognised and that's where we can help here. There's also the motor and planning and sequencing. So this is about recognising that signal, being able to go to the right place at the right time and then following a sequence of events. So being able to pull clothes down or up, sitting on the toilet, being able to actually pass a wee on the wee or a poo on the toilet. So it's that sort of sequencing. 
Some children have a preference for routine and rituals. And sometimes the toileting side of things can be really tricky for our children to actually include that as part of that routine. So that's a lot of what we do here is to sort of help with regards to including that toileting as part of the routine. Sometimes the anxiety and the fear of actually going into this place that you want me to stop what I'm doing, go into that toilet or the bathroom, well, actually, I'm quite comfortable out here and actually I don't want to go into that room. So it's trying to sort of help our children to understand where it is they're going and what it is they've got to do once they actually get there. And it's also adjusting those behaviours um, to the new situations as well. So sometimes our children can learn that toilet routine at home and they can master that at home. But then when it comes to going into school or if they're older child, if they're going into college or a younger child, they're going into nursery. Sometimes it's difficult to actually transfer those skills from one environment to another. So. Where or what can we do to help? So what I thought I put together is some top tips to actually start with toileting or if you've already started how you can actually progress with it. So these are just some top tips to help you start as well as progress. So it doesn't actually matter where you are on that toileting journey. We can all start at the same point. So the first thing we need to look at for our children is knowing your child's poo and wee patterns. So when we are talking about poo and wee, we I should have done like a warning first, shouldn't I really? <laughs> Before I started sharing poo and wee pictures. So let's start with the poo side of things. So this is um, a picture of the Bristol stool chart. And this is sharing that there's seven different types of poos. And we're aiming for our type four poo, according to the Bristol stool chart. And we're aiming for a medium sized poo. That's what we're looking for. And we're wanting our children to pass a poo either three times a day or three times a week. So that sort of means that it's completely normal for your child to pass a poo once a day, twice a day or three times a day. Completely normal. It's also completely normal for your child to pass a poo once every other day or once every three days. But what we're saying is if there's any longer than that, it means that um, we need to sort of have a little look at that and there may be some poo difficulties which can affect our children's toileting. So the first thing we need to do is to know your child's poo patterns. We also need to know our children's wee patterns. So sometimes this part is a little bit tricky, especially if they're wearing a pull up or a nappy or other sort of product because we can't always actually see the wee. So we don't always know what colour that may be. So we're on obviously wanting to make sure that our children are hydrated and we're wanting to make sure that our children are passing a wee between four and seven times a day. So if you're sort of thinking, well, I actually don't know what my child's pattern is. Um, it's OK because we can actually keep a record of that. So what we recommend is that you keep a record ideally for 14 days. Now, the reason we say 14 days is because we said it was completely normal to pass a poo either three times a day or three times a week. So we need to do it longer than a week to get a really clear pattern. Um, exact, so we know exactly what's actually happening there. So. With regards to that, there's sort of two sort of options that we can have. Um, one of them is there's a free download that's available um, on my website, which is where to start with toilet training children and young people with additional needs. And this is actually sharing a chart. So it actually looks at the poo and the wee, and it also looks at drinks as well. So you can use that chart um, to identify exactly what's sort of happening. It also includes the Bristol stool chart. So it helps you identify exactly what's sort of happening. Um, and then we know what your child's pattern is. And then we know how we can actually help. We can also use that chart to identify 
um, when the best time to actually sit on the toilet as well. Because if your if it identifies your child is always pooing, for instance, at a certain time, then we can always make sure that that's when we're introducing one of our toilet sits. So that's what we can do there. The other option is um, I've also published, uh, well, I've actually published three um, publications now, and one of them is the Bowel and Bladder Assessment Pack. And this includes everything you need to um, know about assessing your child. So it includes the assessment packs, includes all the monitoring charts, and it also identifies what to do with that information. So it's all in there. So there's sort of those two options. So obviously you've got your free download and then obviously you've got a lot more information there. So that's sort of the second thing that we can do when we're looking at our children's toileting. The next thing we can do is to look at the drinking side of things. So here, what we really want to be doing is introducing um, regular drinking. So what we mean by regular drinking is encouraging our children to have six to eight cups of drinks across the day. So when we're looking at cups, obviously we need to sort of think about the age of our child. So if we're looking at sort of nursery or sort of preschool sort of age, we're sort of looking at um, a quarter um, of what our cup would actually be. So that sort of size cup. On the um, knowing your child's poo and wee patterns, it actually details there at the bottom exactly the amount of meals, but just so that gives you a rough idea. When we're sort of looking at our older children, so when we're looking at school age um, to sort of uh, the middle of sort of primary school, uh, we're then sort of looking at half a cup and then increasing to our older children, we're looking at sort of that 250 meals. And when we're looking at drinks, we're looking to sort of regulate those drinks. So sort of having them equally across the day because this is actually going to help our children's poos and their wheeze but it's also going to regulate when poo takes place and also enable our children to recognise when they actually need to go for a poo and a wee. So that's why the drinking side of things is really important. So obviously I appreciate that a lot of children do struggle to actually drink. So there's lots of sort of things we can do about that. So we can look at the types of cups that our children have. We can look at um, how they're actually given and when they're given as well. So there's lots of things that we can do to sort of help with our children. But the key is to have those six to eight cups, but equally across the day. And that's really going to help our children's toileting. Because like I say, it's going to regulate that poo and wee, but it's also going to mean that our children are going to recognise those signals. So the other thing that we can do um, when we're looking at toileting is to help our children's understanding of actually what to do and what's expected. So we can do this through um, using visual aids. So um, at the bottom here, I don't know if you can see my cursor sort of going across there. Um, you've got sort of um, visuals with pictures. So how the sort of visuals work is that to begin with, we introduce things that we call objects of reference. So this would be showing a cup. It's time to have a drink. So you're showing an actual object so they get to know that that object equals drink. That's what we're looking at to begin with. We're then progressing from an object to then using an actual picture. So we can begin by using actual pictures. So then it can be an actual picture of your child's drink and you're showing them the cup as well so they can associate and then they learn to understand that that picture means the drink, for instance. And the same with the toilet side of things. Then we can progress to using what we've got here, which is like. Type. Uh, pictures as well. So when we're sort of looking at those, we can look at it as a whole routine. So looking at toilet as where that actually fits into our child's day. So we're waking and we're using the toilet straight away. Then we're having breakfast, whatever else that we're going to be doing. One of the, um, two of the other things that um, I've also published as well, which is really helpful for uh, helping with children and their toileting is the toilet training tool. 
is shown here in the circle and it's also here with the toilet training guide. So this is actually a step by step sort of guide um, detailing exactly what to do and how to help children with additional needs to be successful with their toileting. It's got that step by step and it also has access to a free um, support group as well. And within this, it includes some Tom tags. So here you can actually use it tells you exactly what to do, it includes all the pictures. So these Tom tags actually fit in here and it's got a sequence for each of those, each part of the toileting process. So the idea is, is that we're breaking it down. So rather than our children learning the whole process, um, we're then sort of looking maybe starting at the end. So if our child has already passed a wee or a poo in their nappy or pull up, um, we could then use the tom tags to sort of look at what we need to do at the end so it could be that we use those um, communication aids to so afterwards they then know that after they've been to the toilet they wash their hands then we can come back a little bit more and introduce a little bit more of that routine so with these um, the toilet training toolkit enables you to start from the end so it's almost like we're succeeding we're sort of at the end or we're starting from the beginning and working through. Oh, mate, um, sorry to interrupt you. We're on five. We've got five minutes left in the session. OK, no worries. Thank you. Um, and we've also got the uh, Bobby can use the toilet, um, which is a social story and that details exactly what to do and how to do that. Um, and that has a pull out chart. So just to sort of um, share with you that there's lots of things available here at Clear Steps. So there's lots of free downloads of like where, where to start toilet training your children with additional needs. There's also a free potty and toilet training support group. Um, there's also books that are available. Um, there's also live sessions that I um, deliver. So we've actually got some live sessions that are, we've got one that's running tomorrow and then we've got some others um, that are running around children with additional needs, um, a chance for you to ask your questions, etc. So there's lots of information available um, and that's all available on our website. So that's www.clearstepsconsultancy.co.uk. So please feel free to have a little look at that. Um, and then I'm more than happy um, to help you in whatever way is possible. So it's just to sort of let you know that there is help available um, and I'm happy to help with that. So I don't know if anyone's got any questions around any potty or toilet training that they're actually doing at the moment. I'm more than happy to answer those. So I don't know if we have any questions at all. There's none in the chat at the moment, Charmaine. No, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, so if anybody would like any further support around um, potty or toilet training, um, then obviously there's there's lots available. Um, so at the moment we're just um, we're just in our toileting support autumn camp. We also do a summer camp as well. We're just doing our autumn camp that's running in November. So that's sort of step by step helping families to go through that toileting process. So they've got support with that. And obviously there'll be a summer camp running again in the summertime. Um, so feel free to join us then. Um, we've also got uh, poo support. So some children um, experience difficulties with poo. So it's just sort of how we can sort of overcome those difficulties. And we've also got achieving poo success. Um, and this is a joint sort of approach of looking at the physical side of things as well as the sensory needs as well. Sort of how we can sort of look at the whole situation. So yes, so feel free to have a look at the website. Like I say, there's lots of free um, information on there. So you're more than welcome to, uh, to look at that.